Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to use our sixth method of graphing parabolas. In this case, we're going to use the slope. It's kind of a preview of what's going to come in calculus. So what we rec recognize here is that if we have a parabola, the slope of the graph, the slope of the line that re represents parabola, is always changing. We do realize that at the vertex, at the very bottom or at the very top, depending upon which way the parabola opens up, upward or downward, at the very top or bottom part of the parabola, at the vertex, we realize the slope is equal to zero at that very point right there. To the right here, you can see that the slope is positive. To the left, you can see the slope is negative, but constantly changing. So we recognize that we can find the vertex if we find the point on the parabola where the slope is equal to zero. Then we find the vertex, and at that point, we can probably graph the parabola. By definition, the slope is equal to the limit as the delta x goes to zero of f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x. And you may look at that if you've never seen before, you go, what in the world is that? Well, it turns out that this is basically the rise over the run between two points on the graph. So let's say I have two points that are fairly close together. Notice that this here would be the difference in the x values of the two points, that's called the run, the difference in the x values. And over there, that would be the difference in the y values. Well, that would be the point f of x plus delta x, the function evaluated at x, if this is the value x, so let's, let me put that down in the graph. If this here is x, and this distance here is a small change in x, then this point right there on the graph is x plus delta x. So if we evaluate the function at x, f, at x plus delta x, we get this value for y. If we evaluate the function at x, we get this value, and the difference between them is what we call the rise. So this is the rise, and this is the run, and of course, by definition, the slope is the rise divided by the run. The rise divided by the run. Of course, you can see that that slope here, in this case, is not zero. It's slightly sloped upward. But as we make delta x smaller and smaller and smaller, as we get the two points closer and closer and closer together, you can see that in the end, if they get to be really close in the limit when delta x goes to zero, that will be the exact slope. And if we pick it at this particular point, that slope will be zero. And that's how we're going to attack it. So what we need to do now is evaluate the function at x plus delta x. So what we can say here is that f of x plus delta x, that's equal to the function evaluated at x plus delta x. Remember, y can be written as f of x. And so now we're going to plug in for every x, we're going to plug in x plus delta x, see what we get. So this is equal to the quantity x plus delta x squared plus four times, uh, instead of x, we write x plus delta x, and plus 3. So that's what f, plus, f of x plus delta x is equal to. If we simplify that a little bit, or at least multiply everything out, we get x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x quantity squared plus 4x plus 4 delta x plus 3. And now we're ready to go ahead and plug that in here. So we can say now that the slope, which is equal to the limit, as, and that's not very well written, let me write that again. I like to be clear on the board. So it's equal to the limit as delta x goes to zero of the function evaluated x plus delta x minus the function evaluated x. Remember that the difference in the y values or the rise divided by delta x, which is the run. So it's the limit as that ratio as delta x goes to zero. So this becomes f of x plus delta x, which is x squared. Oh, I can't forget to write the limit. Oop, I got to keep writing that. That eraser is pretty dirty. So let me go ahead and clean it up a little bit. There we go. So here we have the limit as delta x goes to zero of f of x plus delta x, which is that right there. So that would be x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x quantity squared plus 4x plus 4 delta x plus 3, and then we subtract from that the function, minus the function, which is x squared plus 4x plus 3, and the whole thing divided by delta x. All right, now you can see that on, the on here I have 
Mm, an x squared, and here I'm subtracting x squared. Here I have a 4x, and I'm subtracting a 4x, and here I have a 3, and I'm subtracting 3, so I can simplify that by saying that this cancels out, the x squared cancels out with this, the 4x cancels out with this, and the 3 cancels out with this, which means that this becomes the limit. And I get, always get ahead of myself. I try to write too fast, it doesn't come out. So the limit as delta x goes to 0 of what we have left here is 2x delta x plus the quantity delta x squared plus 4 delta x, the whole thing divided by delta x. Now before I let delta x go to the limit, because if I do it now, notice I have a delta x in the denominator. If I let that go to 0, I have a 0 in the denominator, which is undefined. I'm going to divide the numerator by the denominator. I can do that now. So this becomes the limit. I keep writing too fast. The limit as delta x goes to 0 of, if I divide this into that, I get 2x plus delta x because delta x squared divided by delta x is simply delta x, plus 4, because delta x divided into that, that cancels, and I get this. And now you can see I have no longer delta x in the denominator, so I can let delta x go to 0. That means this is equal to 2x plus 4. And remember, the definition of this, this is equal to the slope of that equation, to the slope of that parabola, which means that I can find the slope of the parabola for any value for x. When x equals 0, the slope is 4. When x equals 1, the slope is 6. When x equals 2, the slope is 8. But when is the slope equal to 0? Well, to find that, I'm going to set the slope equal to 0 and solve for x. So now I'm going to set the slope equal to 0 and solve for x. All right, so now we get 0 equals 2x plus 4, which means 2x equals minus 4, or x equals minus 2. So when x equals minus 2, the slope is 0, that means x equals minus 2, that's where I find my vertex. So at my vertex, I can say that my x-coordinate is minus 2. If I want to find my y-coordinate, I take my x equals negative 2, plug it in here. So negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 4 times negative 2 is minus 8, so 4 minus 8 is minus 4, plus 3 is minus 1, that means the y value is minus 1, and that's the point of my vertex. Now, of course, on that graph it doesn't make any sense because that's not in the right place. So, if I want to graph it, I say here's my y-axis, there's my x-axis. Okay, the point minus 2, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2, and minus 1 in the y-direction. Oh, let me move that over a little bit. Minus 2, there we go. So, there's the point right there where my vertex is negative, negative 2 for the x value, negative 1 for the y value, and so negative 2, negative 1, that's right there. And I realize that my parabola opens upward because I have a positive a coefficient in front of the x squared term, so I know it opens upward, and I want to find the place where it crosses the y-axis, so the y-intercept can be found by setting x equal to 0, which means that the y-intercept can be found by saying y is equal to 0 squared plus 4 times 0 plus 3, which means when y equals 3, that's where it crosses the y-axis. 1, 2, 3, right there. So with the two points, the vertex, and where it crosses the y-axis, I can graph my parabola. And there we go. That's how we do that. Now you may say, why in the world would you pick such a difficult way of finding the vertex and graphing a parabola. The reason is because this actually will be used quite a bit in the future when we do calculus. And calculus can solve some very difficult problems that cannot be solved in any other way. For example, there's a very easy way to find the slope using calculus. Matter of fact, to give you a little preview, we can say that the slope is equal to the derivative of this equation. It's called y prime, which is called dy dx, which is equal to well, when we take the exponent and put it in front, we get 2x to the exponent minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. And then here, plus 4, the x drops out and the 3 drops out. And so you can very easily find the derivative or the slope by using calculus, which is what we did here in kind of a roundabout way. This proves that this is correct. And so now we see that there's a very easy way to find the slope, to find any place on a curve, not just parabolas, but equations to the third and fourth and fifth order. 
and you can see that it becomes easy to graph when you find very specific points on the slope or very specific points on the graph. And that's how we do that.